How's it going guys? Welcome back to another episode of Stormworks Tutorials. Today we're going to be taking a look at jet engines and how you can use them uh, in your creations and I'm going to be showing you how they work and it's, I'm going to try and keep it super simple for you guys. Um, so if you're new this will be hopefully really helpful and uh, yeah let's get right into it. Okay, so here I have a example of a simple jet engine that you might build uh, on a plane here. And I'll show you how to um, put all this together um, in a minute. But I just uh, wanted to show you an example of what the jet engine could look like and um, in an example. Um, but yeah, let's, let's take a look at how to build this. Okay, so, we're going to start off with the first component, this is the intake of the jet, and there are two of these, the large and the small, as you can see here, and they have no um, different effects, the sizes, they both act completely the same, um, So, but the, the large one just is larger, um, so it's going to work better for big engines when the small one's going to be good for compact uh, but they're completely the same and all jet components are going to be free by free except from this uh, which I'm not so I think it's a 7 by 7 but other than that free by free so they're not too big but they can be uh, they can get really big if you're uh, doing a very small creation so we're gonna just focus on the small one for now and you'll notice on the back here it just has these little blank connection places which don't really um, have anything on them uh, which may have confused uh, some people because you obviously have the fluid um, and electric ports on here uh, and other stuff so what you're gonna need for the second part is a jet compressor and this is going to go on the uh, intake and that's gonna uh, act as your on off for the engine um, so this is by turning this on and off uh, that will spool up the engine and turn it on so after that we're gonna put a jet combustion chamber and this one actually has another node on it uh, for fuel and this is going to be where your throttle uh, input is going to be as well and take note of the arrows on the side of these components all arrows must be facing away from the intake and towards the exhaust uh, and you'll see that when I put it on in a minute now after a combustion chamber we're going to need a turbine now the turbine's useful because you can either have a small one which uh, is just the jet or you can have a medium which outputs a power as well so you can use jet engines to power anything else that an, a normal engine would power so they're not purely thrust out the back uh, if you get what I mean but we'll wire all this up in a minute I just want to show you the basics on how to build this now there are three types of exhaust we have the afterburner which is the uh, it has another fuel input which allows um, you to burn more fuel but gives you um, um, more speed uh, like an afterburner would in real life and then you have a the basic exhaust which is simple nothing crazy just an exhaust and you also have a rotating exhaust which uh, as it says rotates which is good for um, vertical takeoff and landing or adjusting the pitch of your thrusters and it's pretty cool but we're gonna just stick with the afterburner 
and a thing to note these all have frost spoilers um, which basically is a zero to one and your engine can be on but if your frost spoiler is closed then you won't move uh, so you can have it on but not pushing you uh, which is useful in a lot of cases but that's how you build your engine and you can also use the ducts um, to say if you didn't want your exhaust to be there straight away you could have a duct you can split the thrust between two exhausts in a direction like that so there's a lot of things you can do with this uh, but yeah okay so let's take a look at wiring up all our uh, nodes here so fuel we're gonna get a tank like we normally would um, for our other engines however a tank spawns uh, in creative mode with filled with diesel normally uh, but if you were in limited fuel mode it wouldn't spawn with anything in which case you don't have to worry about this but uh, jets don't run on diesel they use jet fuel and so you're gonna have to uh, use your select tool to select your tank and uh, select what it's gonna fill up with uh, to jet fuel so that's pretty simple and then I'm just going to use some pipes here to connect up the different fuel connections to our afterburner as well since we are using one okay now you're probably going to want to use more than one tank on this especially if you're using an afterburner but this is going to be a little example so it's okay and then for the power we're not really powering a prop or anything so we're just going to put a generator on there uh, to charge a battery uh, which is going to power the whole thing and all the dials that we're going to put on so now that we have all of this and if you go into the logic tab it might seem like a lot but we're not going to be using a good amount of these um, for the main thing so yeah but I will take the time to wire up the electric and I'll put some dials on for all our variables so we have fuel I won't change any of these Um, we're going to go engine RPS. What do we? And I'll show you what and why I put combustion chamber RPS in a minute when we uh, make it run. So we've got battery combustion chamber rotations per second and combustion chamber temperature. Okay, now we're gonna need a toggle. Actually, no. We can use a push in this case um, to turn it on and off, but we'll get a toggle for the afterburner. So this will be. like that and um, we'll just wire those straight up nothing needed there and we'll get our throttle lever and this will be for the throttle so, duh. and what we're going to do is actually this throttle lever will set the RPS that our engine will run at 
so we don't want it to be going at one rotation per second because that's going to be too slow and the engine won't actually turn on so we're going to do a reasonable number 85 is pretty high but if you've got a big creation then 85 is going to get you quite uh, a lot of thrust and it shouldn't go overheat shouldn't overheat so that should be good and then we'll have a we'll have a throttle lever for the uh, frost spoiler on the back let me just check this okay so The frost spoiler works where if it's a one then it's completely closed and no frost will be on so I just set it to start value one so it won't fly off when we turn it on uh, which is cool and we'll put a couple wheels on the bottom just for fun There we go, and just raise it down a little bit. Okay, now we're gonna make the engine work. Okay, so an engine, a jet engine, won't work if you give it throttle one because or if you give it a max throttle setting shall we say it won't it won't stay stable like an engine will an engine will cap out an rps because there's a limiter built into it but there isn't on a jet engine so you put a full throttle to it and there's nothing going to stop it from just burning itself apart and exploding and catching fire which is not what we want we want something there that's going to regulate the RPS and keep it um, stable so we can do that by using a PID controller and this takes the throttle value and the RPS value and will regulate both of them uh, to ensure that the engine doesn't just blow up and uh, I'll show you how to do that right now okay so what I did was I changed the values on our PID and you can copy these um, because there are many different combinations of gains that you can use for this that work but I found this one for me just uh, it works with high thrust bigger vehicles so you can use this um, as well so I won't go too deep into the numbers here if you wanna if you wanna know about that go check out my PID guide and I talk all about it and how you can configure a PID to do something like this but a PID has a few nodes on it uh, we have an active which I just put straight to an on signal so it's always going to be on um, we don't really need it to be off at any point um, but the output can go to our throttle because that's what's going to be uh, controlled by the PID and then the set point is going to be our throttle because a PID will try and compare the process variable in this case the RPS to the set point and regulate it um, and that's going to be the PID all done. Now this should work by itself. I just have to power all this up like that. And this should work now, so I'm going to spawn this in. Quickly test it. Okay, so our frost spoils on one, engine temp zero, and everything's looking good. And so. We'll start the compressor. Now it's not going to turn on now because we don't have any throttle, but it will build up the RPS slowly, and then we can.
give it some juice. As you can see, we have frost coming up the back, but it's not moving because our frost spoiler, spoiler is at zero. And we're building up. It's set at 25 right now, so I'm hoping, yeah, it's just going to cap at five. We can go full max. Explode actually. So yeah. And so that's going um if I pull the frost spoiler down, it's gonna gonna do that. But I would say that was a uh, complete success. Uh, let me just go and find it. Yeah. <laughs> Is that it? No, it's gone. Never mind. <laughs> Let's see if I can get it back. There we go. Okay. So, <laughs> that's how you build a jet. Obviously, this doesn't have to be what it looks like. You can don't have to put all these dials in. And there's many ways you can configure it, but this is completely basic, and this is going to get you started on how to build a jet. Um, so yeah, I would recommend that you take a look on the workshop at some creations that use jets. Uh, look at how they um, they are built, and try to pick up some ideas, and that will probably help you quite a lot. That's what I did, at least, and uh, yeah. That's going to be about it. If you want to see any other tutorials, do leave a comment. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching.